Hi friends, so I go for February month 2022 Yojana title New Education Policy. The article is Nippun Bharat Mission. I what this idea is first we need to understand the background of it. That is foundation learning forms the cornerstone of successful academic development and its gateway of learning. So any long term benefits in foundation learning will be a better life outcome and higher economic growth. So what this primary focus of this mission is that is in paragraph 1 that is foundation learning. So foundation learning is regarding school educations especially in the age group of 3 to 8 until grade 3. So until grade 3 so what are the education a kid is learning that is called foundation learning and it is have a very good positive impact of foundation learning is very effective that resulting in better life outcomes. What is better life outcome means it can be career opportunities and uh, thinking about career paths all are better and also overall development of an individual is very very good in that aspect if a person has very good foundation. And next thing is higher economic growth for society point of view the advantage is higher economic growth because that individual once have a very good education until the grade 3 ultimately that is going to transform into better education for the individual contributing to the economy. So either through means of job or through entrepreneurship so they have a greater contributions. So that is the importance of this foundation learning why that need to be focused. And next thing paragraph 2. So, so it is said that there are some factual numbers are given which can be used for our answer writing. So they have given Anganwadis. So Anganwadis that is around 14 lakh Anganwadis are there in India. So in that around 3 crore children. So 3 crore children in the age group of 3 to 6 are there in Anganwadis. And uh, that is UDISC 2019-20. That is Unified District Information System for Education. Unified District Information System for Education. As per that year of 2019 and 20 says that there are 15 lakh schools, 15 lakh schools in which 25 crores children are studying. So these are some factual and statements which you can use it for answer writing regarding importance of education and all these things you can relate here. And another thing is universal, universalization of elementary education gross enrollment ratio. So, so in elementary education in elementary education gross enrollment ratio so right now in primary level in primary level is around 102 so 102 percentage and uh, so uh, don't get confused with this what is this 102 percentage means so so gross enrollment ratio already we saw that in that age group of kids how many are in schools that is called gross enrollment ratio and especially the primary level in India 1 or 2 percentage is there. What is 1 or 2 percent? Percentage is always 100. What is 1 or 2 means? The people who already list, miss the opportunities of being also integrated into that thing. So even their age is bad, they are also got integrated. So that is the reason we have this 1 or 2 percentage. So that is grade 1 to 3. So primary education is nothing but grade 1 to 3. So these are some factual statements which you can use it for your answer writing which says that in India 25 crores children are in schools and we have 14 lakh Anganwadis where 3 crores children are associated with that that is from the age group of 3 to 6. So these are some of the factual information we can write why education is important from Indian sense. Of, Indian sense. Okay. And next we go for paragraph 1, 2, 3. Oh, six and seven. Right. So in paragraph one, so national achievement survey. This you can use it for your answer writing. National achievement survey conducted in the year of 2017. They found out that 18 percentage and 13 percentage childrens in language and numeracy in class three are below basic level and 15 and 18 percent of children in language and numeracy in class 5 or below basic level. Only 47 and 53 percent of children in class 3 
and 47 44 percentage in class 4 achieve proficiency in language and numeracy so this last facts can, facts can be used for your answer writing that is like a table or column class 3 so class 5 so when you go for so 47 percentage and 53 percentage and 47 percentage and 44 percentage so that is for language and numeracy so what we need to understand is in 2017 when the survey was done in class 3 out of 100 students 47 students are good in languages and 53 students are good in numbers whereas in class 5 47 is good in num language 44 is good in numbers this clearly shows that around 50 percentage of students on an average are bad in both languages and numbers and we already saw that class 3 acts as a foundation for future education ultimately that results in dropout rates are very high in next level of educations so this is the finding which you can use it for your answer writing national achievement survey 2017 so you can use it as a tabular column you can draw or you can put like uh, some graph like this so for example uh, language and numeracy so numbers this can be percentage the percentage and you can say about uh, so class 3 and you can draw something and say that so 47 percentage and 53 percentage for uh, uh, language and numeracy like this you can go for the other uh, graph also so it depends upon your way of uh, representing the point okay that's paragraph 1 it's a factual information which you use it for your answer writing so paragraph 2 so uh, another most important thing is they are focusing on this curriculum that is structure of pedagogy 533 plus 4 what it says is foundation so 5 is first 5 years is foundational the next thing is preparatory so preparatory and next thing is middle and secondary so so 12th standard from class LKG 12th is being divided in such a way that first 5 years is considered to be foundational one the next thing is preparatory F next three years are considered to be preparatory that is making students ready for real education and middle and secondary so these are the uh, structures right now what new education policy proposes already we saw in the previous policies we have 10 plus 2 and what government filled under 10 plus 2 is uh, 10 plus 2 majorly focusing on only two years of education that is 10 standard and 12 standard and where students are more interested in uh, by hearting things and getting marks rather than understanding the importance of education to set right that thing we have this 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 model so that is given in paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 so paragraph 3 speaks about the importance of foundational learning so foundational learning so foundational learning is grade 3 so in the level of grade 3 where they ha have the ability so ability to read so ability to read and mathematical operations they are good in mathematical operations this we can relate with this paragraph one so that is our objective of our uh, system and a new education policy to st strengthen this foundational dimensions okay next thing is paragraph four so right now department of so department of school education and literacy to address all these previous problems what we saw so department of school education and literacy has la launched this nippun bharat the title of this article it stands national initiative for proficiency in reading with understanding and numeracy so expansionist national initiative for proficiency proficiency in reading with understanding this we need to understand so what they are saying is you should be proficient in reading as a student at the grade 3 they should be good in reading reading should be with understanding not by hearting and numeracy numeracy is good in numbers so for that one Nipun Bharat mission was created so Nipun Bharat mission was created and uh, making sure that there's the universal acquisition so once you have a successful this mission what is the outcome is universal acquisition acquisition of foundation literacy and numeracy so Nippon Bharat missions primary objective is to achieve this foundation literacy and numeracy among our school kids okay and next thing is paragraph 5 so it is being established 
at five five stages five tier system so five tier implementation is done for this nippon bharat what is five tier is starting with nation state district block and school level so they have clear given the clear structure of implementing nippon bharat right from national level to school level they created five structures and it's entirely based on activity so activity based learning so students especially un until the grade 3 they do activities to learn the things uh, example if they want to learn numbers what is activity based le learning is nothing but if they want to know what is four means they'll have four apples so they can easily understand what four stands for so it's more about touch feel understanding of uh, education that is activity based education and uh, next thing is use of colors colors shapes so indoor outdoor place play based learning puzzles logical thinking logical thinking so logical thinking problem solving so all these are being designed for this nipun bharat mission painting arts painting arts so these are the various ways in which uh, 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 education is promoted especially at the foundation level that is until grade 3 these are the various mechanisms on which kids are being educated especially in language and numbers and paragraph 6 and it its primary objective is making learning holistic holistic what is holistic means not only through books through experiences through visual through play the next thing is inclusive enjoyable so education should be more about experiential one rather than uh, rote learning and engaging so engaging so this is the primary object of nipun bharat all the paragraph 5 and 6 and next thing is so what are the other importance of uh, nipun bharat is focusing on developing in especially kids physical and motor development physical and motor development what is physical and develop motor development means the ability of kid to physically very active motor development is and i coordination all this can be developed all this unit relate with grade 3 until grade 3 where child can develop very fast and motor development is given primary focus under this initiative apart from the socio emotional development socio emotional development socio emotional development numeracy development so developing numbers and next thing is cognitive so ability to understand the things and relating things cognitive development and next thing is moral development so these are the various aspect of this objective of nipun bharat mission so ultimately the primary focus is if you want to put in one term overall personality development of the kid so they are very good in every aspects of the life right from reading numbers sports activity creativity innovation all will be part of this education mission that is nipun bharat mission so that is given in paragraph 7 next thing is paragraph 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so next thing is uh, competency based learning so competency based learning for education so the primary focus of this uh, education system is nipun bharat mission is there are certain outcomes so at the end of the mission the outcomes are being measured on the kids how well they are performing certain activities how well they are doing certain tasks so that's nothing but competency based education so it's not about providing literally education we are also evaluating the kids how competent they are how good they are in numbers how good they are in uh, la language proficiency that is the primary objective that's called competency based education that is given in paragraph 1 so paragraph 2 is uh, so they are majorly focusing on learning outcomes so they are majorly focusing on learning outcomes so learning outcomes it's not only inputs so this policy is not only focusing on inputs just giving books and creating a school for kids they are also evaluating how effective is that educationness that's learning outcomes which is measurable so which is measurable okay and so that is the primary focus of this and uh, next thing is paragraph 
so they also creating this uh, so lakshya suchi or targets so under this foundational literacy and numeracy as the kids are learning the language numbers through various mechanisms there is a frequent review how they are being doing so they are given some targets so they it clearly identifies the students overall development and which are the students being lacking and how to promote that students again through various mechanisms so that's a major aspect of this one and uh, next thing is paragraph 4 so so right now and a new education policy 2020 especially and un until grade 1 until grade 1 that is activity based learning activities bird activities bird activity based learning is promoted for that ncert has developed ncert has developed so a module so that is vidya pravesh so especially for until grade 1 activity based learning ncert has developed this with vidya pravesh so a part of Nithu, uh, nipun bharat mission so all these are being developed a school preparation module which is being done the next thing is uh, so this ensures that students are smoothly transferring from foundation to the next level so so that is the objective of this and so what is the primary aspect of this nipun bharat is as per paragraph 6 critical thinking after finishing of this nipun bharat mission by the school especially at the lower level of the school education a kid will have critical thinking scientific temper so critical thinking is nothing but not understanding the information at is as it is given so they'll go on thinking in 360 degree dimensions why it happens how it happens why all this happens so that's called critical thinking scientific temper always approaching the uh, issues from scientific point of view so that is called scientific uh, temper and activity based learning activity based learning activity based learning okay so so the primary objective of uh, nipun bharat mission is to create all these things among school kids the next thing is paragraph 1 paragraph 2 3 and 4 and in paragraph 1 so under nipun bharat initiative we have school based assessment so it's not only assessing individual kids under school based assessment there is a entire classrooms are being assessed classroom transactions experience is being assessed so it's a holistic assessment is being done holistic one so not only individual students entire schools being assessed under this particular mission which clearly gives a collective responsibility the next thing is paragraph 2 and this helps in decentralized manner so documentations okay documentation for uh, uh, school assessments what is the advantage of school assessment is this promotes promotes decentralization promotes decentralization and also day to day observation so day to day observation so day to day observations and documentation so documentation and also nutritional status nutritional status and classroom behaviors classroom behaviors so all these are being integrated under the school based assessment so it makes me very holistic from individual point of view and a system point of view okay and so nipun bharat is more about people's involvement or stakeholders involvement people is a common term we call it as stakeholders so there should be active stakeholders involvement in this particular program to make it more successful that is given in paragraph 3 and paragraph 4 they say the role of impo importance of family and community so family and community this numbers are given here family and communities correct so where child learns a lot in family and community so they say 80 percentage of time in a child's life 80 percentage of time they spend in homes so ultimately it's not only the school need to play an active role in education family and the home play, need to play an active role in the education okay that is the things given in this last paragraph next we go for teach them in next article so paragraph 1 so paragraph 1 says under new education policy 2020 they say that 85 percentage of child's cumulative brain development so brain development occurs before 6 before age of 6 so what the statement we need to understand is 
when a child is born so they have all their organs in place brain is the only organ which is very small then in the child's first six years the brain growth is very high when compared to the other organs growth so ultimately you can see that brain began to develop very fast neural networks began to form during this until age of six that is the point where as an education system need to create avenues for the kid to develop lot of neural networks so neural networks are not, nothing but nerve combinations so if a kid under the school system is able to get all this different nerve combinations how that can be achieved through experimental learning process interaction playing so this neural networks would form very fast and there will be greater development that is a fact given here 80 per 85 percentage of child's cumulative brain development happens before the age of six so that is the most important fact we need to understand next paragraph two and paragraph three so paragraph two says so child's brain so child's brain is nothing but until the age of six considered to be plastic so rapidly growing and prepare for future what is plastic is nothing but very elastic so they are able to learn all different things very fast very quick so that is the reason it's called plastic rapidly growing it's grow very fast the brain's development and compared to the other other organs development is very fast and also this is the years where the kid is ready for the future so that is given here that is what given and great number of experiences more neuron creates neural pathways for optimal learning and development until the age of 6 if a, if a kid is exposed to various experience in the life ultimately that going to help their future life because lot of neural networks forms and their brains are very active in paragraph 3 so nobel laureate J, uh, james hackman so this you can use it for your introduction or uh, any substantiating points so investing in ch uh, early childhood education produces the greatest returns in terms of human capital and ensuring quality economic returns far greater than investing in schooling so what he uh, the nobel laureate says is so nobel laureate james heckman says so investing in early childhood education early childhood education is nothing but what he says about until grade 3 so early childhood education so early childhood education is more important rather than investing in schoolings so early childhood education that's nothing but uh, we see this program called early uh, child care and education so that is the point what he says when you investing lot in that area more productive and outcome when compared with focusing on primary education or secondary education or uh, higher educations so what he is insisting is in a society a government should be more focused on early child education that is until grade 3 that has a very positive outcome in the society next thing is paragraph 1 2 so in paragraph 1 so again they are speaking about this anganwadis so what is the background of anganwadi so anganwadi comes under ministry of women and child development and they are created under integrated child development scheme 1975 and they are responsible for nutrition health uh health to preschool so this is where new education policy promoting anganwadi is focusing on preschool non formal education non formal education so that's a background of anganwadi given in there and in paragraph 2 so it is said that of nearly 25 million children born in india every year about 99 percentage enroll in the school at the age of 5 or 6 so they say that this is another factual informations okay so 25 million children so 25 million means that is nothing but uh, 1 million is uh, 10 lakh so you can see that uh, 25 million means what the number is so 25 million children born in india every year so 99 percentage enroll in the school by the age of age of 6 so age of 6 asr 
अच्छा एनुअल स्टेटस ऑफ एजुकेशन रिपोर्ट एनुअल स्टेटस ऑफ एजुकेशन रिपोर्ट 2019 सेज दैट सो सो दे आर नॉट स्कूल रेडी सो इन दिस एनरोलमेंट दे आर नॉट स्कूल रेडी स्कूल रेडी एंड हाउ दे आर सेइंग इज अराउंड 10 परसेंटेज 10 परसेंटेज एट द एज ऑफ फाइव सो एज ऑफ फाइव could match the pictures with the sounds so what what we need to understand is if a kid is in age of 5 what asr report says is out of 100 kids only 10 kids can match the picture with the sound for example you give a dog picture and create a sound of the dog and ask them to place on the sound only 10 kids can correctly do that what uh, the dog's uh, sound and the picture they can match it very easily this clearly shows that lack of brain development in the kids so that is the point that is neural networks are not properly formed now the factual information they say 17 percentage so could pictorial patterns what is pictorial patterns means assume that you draw a cow cut it into different pieces and ask the kids to join it out of 100 kids only 7 17 kids can do it so this clearly shows that uh, again brain development is uh, very uh, slow in that particular kids okay that's all given in paragraph 2 which you can use it for your answer writing so why national education policy is important why early child care is important okay so in paragraph 3 uh, this we already saw that so early child care and education and foundation literacy and numeracy so through nipun bharat so i this nipun bharat mission is important all the previous paragraphs clearly indicates it why that need to be promoted that's given in paragraph 3 next thing is uh, so paragraph 1 2 so in paragraph 1 they say that this initiative should be a people movement so like so new education policy and this nipun bharat should be a people movement similar to this uh, polio eradication of swachh bharat so to make it more successful that is what the author says and paragraph 2 so where in 1950s robert have you got in his book human development education spoke about teachable movements so there is another term which you can use it for your answer writing so teachable movements is nothing but whenever there is a right opportunity you can teach the kids and the kids can learn from them it's not only through schools through activities through experiences that's what this uh, says that is called teachable movement that is what right now integrated into our uh, early child uh, this early ch child care and uh, education so that's teachable movement okay next paragraph 1 2 3 and 4 so in paragraph 1 again So 2021, that is annual status of education report 2021 says that after this pandemic, so it is found out that uh, there is a greater penetration of smartphones. S smartphone penetration is very high, especially for education purpose in India. So what we can understand is for this new education policy, the te modern technologies can be leveraged. It can be effectively used for that. So that is nothing but change in parental mindset of smartphone for learning. so previously pre pandemic situation phones are considered to be diversion for uh, kids but parental mindset has changed after this pandemic situation right now it is used as a tool for learning process so that is what it being said so so one in 28 households in india has brought the mobile phones one in 28 households so purchased smartphones purchased smartphones so that is what the point says and paragraph 2 and also new education policy focus on multilingual and the power of language so new education policy never focus only english as a medium for education even local languages can be effectively used so especially at lower level mother tongue is used for teaching kids and the reason for that thing is they are able to understand the concepts very easily so power of languages that is local language easy to understand the concept a great way of understanding this point is if we take most of the achievers in india especially in scientific platforms if we, we go and check their background all are educated in the vocational uh, education vernacular languages so uh, starting from abdul kalam and all started their in initial years in uh, 
vernacular languages the reason is they are able to understand the concepts very effectively so that is what being said in this paragraph 2 and paragraph 3 so importance of learning language so why language need to be learned so they said that by the age of 2 to 8 any kid in the age of 2 to 8 so they are able to get ability to learn lot of new languages so they can earn uh, learn lot of new languages by the age of 2 to 8 this helps in cognitive cognitive abilities so whenever they learn a new languages cognitive ability increases that is cognitive skills the ability to make decisions increase a very fast because learning new languages gives new terms understanding concepts will be very different that is the biggest benefit so under new education policy they are promoting this learning new languages and also they are going to focus on creating a special education zone so these are the news articles these are the articles of yojana which seems to be more important for our preparations okay so we'll see a question so so this is the last year question are uh, gs so the question's primary focus is regarding population education and what are the measures to achieve them in india in detail so the first we need to understand what is population education means so this is an idea as per unesco's definition population education is how in education programs they are able to understand the population and its impact in family society and global at large so that's called population education so the objective of population education if you want to put in simple terms what are the benefits of nuclear families that if you are able to understand that's the objective of population education so why that need to be promoted and what are the measures to achieve them in india in details so how india is focusing on its population education so how indian system is trying to make a kids understand this population education here you can take this this things what we discussed right now and a new education policy and a new education policy you can see that policy is designed in such a way that interaction of the local communities must so as a as a kid they are able to understand the local communities issues and problems which helps them to understand how population education is must what should be the size of the family how many kids need to be there and what are the benefits of understanding sex education so all this being understood when they interact with the society a lot and this new education policy can be one point you can write in your answers how this new education policy prepares our students to understand the societal problems and one such thing is population education so that you can write it here and apart from this you can also relate with this uh, uh, special education zones because uh, special education zones we can see that one of the biggest problem why there is no proper development is because of overpopulation is one reason which is able to address the issues of this population education so that initiative can also be written here as a point so there are two points you can write based on this uh, article new education policy one is integrating society with education system so a kid can understand what are the problems of the society and special education zone is one of the reason why it got the status of special education zone is because of overpopulation lack of development so ultimately they can understand so importance of population education okay okay thank you